Stan Jabalisco here to talk about the units of electrostatic charge. Electrostatic charge. You know, you've got an idea what that is if you've been through a long winter up north and had the experience of getting zapped every time you touch something like your thermostat, your refrigerator, sometimes even a desk lamp or a radiator. Electrostatic charge. What exactly is electrostatic charge is kind of a nebulous question or a nebulous concept because it's very difficult to define it exactly. But in the olden days, they discovered, <coughs> scientists discovered, and experimenters discovered that if you rubbed, for example, a glass rod with a cloth made out of certain material, that that glass rod would acquire strange properties, the, the property to attract little pieces of paper and things like that. You, um, they also discovered that under certain circumstances, if you stand outside during a thunderstorm, your hair will stand on end. If that ever happens to you, you better crouch down and get into a little ball so that you don't get fried when the lightning strikes. But electrostatic charge is, in fact, responsible for lightning, as well as those little zaps that you get when you touch the radiator after shuffling around on a carpet on a dry day in the winter up north. They're both the same phenomenon, just on much different scales, as a hurricane is like a very tiny galaxy, or vice versa. But what we're looking at here is a very simple model of the atom called the Bohr atom or the Bohr model of the atom. The Bohr model of the atom has electrons like this little green thing just one of which is shown here orbiting around the nucleus which is this clump of thingies in the center here like little uh, pieces of puffed rice and raisins all stuck together with syrup <clears throat> into a ball. The little black things are the protons and they have an electrical charge on them. The neutrons, the little uh, colorless blobs there, do not have an electric charge. The electron also has an electric charge and as things work out the electron has the exact same quantity the exact same quantity of electrical charge as a proton does. An electron and a proton have the same quantity of electrical charge, but they are opposite in sense. As things work out, electrons have a negative charge. That's just what they happen to call the type of charge that ended up being carried by electrons protons have a positive charge and they each have what we call a unit charge a unit charge meaning it's the smallest amount of charge that you will see in ordinary daily life you will never see anything smaller in terms of electric charge than the amount of charge that exists on a single electron or a single proton. And they call that an electrostatic charge unit, or ECU. One electrostatic charge unit is carried by a proton or by an electron. So that is the fundamental unit, and that turns out, of course, to be a very small unit indeed, because a single electron or a single proton are just one particle in a matter that contains billions or trillions of them, maybe even quadrillions or quintillions of them, just a countless number of them, practically. So scientists decided that they needed to develop a larger unit of electrostatic charge and they came up with something based on experimental um, outcomes that turned out to be a very convenient unit of electrostatic charge. If you take 6.24 
times 10 to the 18th, 10 to, not 10 to the 8th, 10 to the 18th electrostatic charge units, that is if you clump together 6.24 times 10 to the 18th protons, or 6.24 times 10 to the 18th electrons, you will get a fundamental unit of electrostatic charge called the Coulomb. Named after Charles Augustine Coulomb, who lived during the 18th century and did experiments along these lines of electrostatic charge. He's just one of the scientists whose names have been immortalized as electrical and magnetic units as well as physical units and even chemical units in some cases. But how many is really is 6.24 times 10 to the 18th? Well, if you write a 6 and then you write a decimal point and then you write a 2, 4, you'd have to put 16 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 16 zeros after that. And then, of course, you get rid of the decimal point. And this is what you end up with right there. Actually, if you put commas in here, like you'll often see in big numbers, you get that. <laughs> Whatever the heck that is, I believe it's 6.24 quintillion. Uh, 10 to the 18th is a quintillion. They call it a quintillion. I don't know where that comes from, where the quint means five of something. I'm not sure exactly what, but a six, a two, a four, and then 16 zeros. That is a coulomb. That's an awful lot. And yet, if you get just one coulomb of electrical charge carriers flowing past a given point in one second, you get a current of one ampere. So one ampere equals one coulomb per second. So that's just a little summary of the, the two fundamental units of electrostatic charge that you're most often going to hear about. The electrostatic charge unit, which is a unit charge contained in a single particle, either a negatively charged electron or a positively charged proton, or the Coulomb, which is a big bunch of them, like a dozen, except a dozen on steroids. A dozen is a standard unit for 12. A gross is a standard unit for a standard term for a 12 times 12 or 144, 12 dozen. And a coulomb is a standard term for 6.24 times 10 to the 18th. Because it's representable by simply a number, we call it a dimensionless unit. A dimensionless unit unit because it doesn't involve dimensions like direction or displacement or speed or intensity or anything like that. It simply involves, it's just a big, big number. Stan Jubilisco signing off for now. Until next time, so long.